This video is brought to you by Keeps. Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pass borders by the time they're 35? No, no idea. I mean, yes, obviously. For me, it was like 25. I wish Keeps had been around when I was younger because advancements in science meant that there are now treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair that you have. Look, it's too late for me. My hair's not coming back, but you didn't have to be like me. You could stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved drugs for treating hair loss, so you may have tried them before, but never at a price this low. That's right, if you were thinking, mm, this is some sort of meds and it's gonna be very expensive, well, you couldn't be more wrong. Keep starts at just $10 a month. So how does it work? Well, for one thing, there's no need to visit a doctor's office, just schedule a quick online consult, and a bit later, a discreet package will arrive at your door and you can use it in the privacy of your own home. So, if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, that's one problem that's not going to fix itself. Do something about it for a limited time. Go to keeps.com forward slash brain food or click the link in the description below and you'll receive 50% off your first order. And now today's video. When the British Expeditionary Force was evacuated from the French town of Dunkirk in May 1940, it was forced to leave most of its weapons and equipment behind on the beaches. Thus, while the Royal Navy kept British home waters safe and the Royal Air Force's Bomber Command carried out nightly bombing raids against occupied Europe, the British Army found itself with few means of striking back against Nazi Germany. The solution came in 1940 with the creation of the Commandos, a group of elite, highly trained soldiers and Marines tasked with carrying out small-scale raids into occupied territory to collect intelligence, perform sabotage, and generally harass the enemy. The commandos proved extraordinarily effective, carrying out some of the most daring special operations of the war. And perhaps the most daring commando raid of all time was a 1942 operation in which a group of 10 Royal Marines struck a crippling blow to German shipping using the unlikeliest of weapons, the humble canoe. This is the extraordinary tale of Operation Frankton and the Cockle Shell Heroes. The German invasion of France in the summer of 1940 dramatically changed the strategic landscape of the war. Previously, German shipping could only access the Atlantic via the Baltic Sea and the Skagerrak Strait between Denmark and Norway, allowing it to be easily bottled in by the Royal Navy. Access to ports on the French coast not only gave German U-boats direct access to Britain's vulnerable Western approaches, but also allowed Germany to carry out trade in raw materials with its ally, Imperial Japan. Despite persistent efforts by the Royal Navy to cut off German shipping, blockade-running ships regularly succeeded in penetrating the British cordon, and in the 12 months from June 1941 to 1942, the Germans managed to bring in more than 25,000 tons of rubber, oil, and other raw materials from the Far East. Much of this trade was centered on the French port of Bordeaux, which soon became a prime target for Allied military planners. But there was a problem. Bordeaux, located some hundred kilometers inland from the mouth of the Gironde River, was a fiendishly difficult target. A conventional naval attack was out of the question, for any fleet would be spotted and destroyed by German ships, aircraft, and shore batteries long before it reached its target. Attack from the air was also ruled out, as a daylight raid would be swiftly shot out of the sky, while a night raid would be too inaccurate and risk inflicting excessive civilian casualties. One man, however, thought he had a solution. Major Herbert Blondie Hassler was a Royal Marines officer with a deep passion for sailing and small watercraft. Born in Dublin in 1940, as a boy, Hassler built his own canoe from instructions from Boy's Own magazine and took it on excursions around Portsmouth Harbour and the Isle of Wight. Knowing firsthand the maneuverability and stealth such craft could achieve, in early 1941, Hassler submitted a report to the British Admiralty outlining his plan for using small teams of men equipped with folding kayaks, known to the British as canoes or fall boats, to attack heavily defended enemy harbours. While similar ideas had been put forward by Commander Captain Roger Courtney, founder of the Special Boats, section, today the Special Boat Service, or SBS, the Admiralty found the concept too outlandish and rejected Hassler's suggestions. Then, on December 19, 1941, Italian naval frogman of the elite Decima Flottiglia MAS unit carried out a spectacular raid on Alexandria Harbour in Egypt, seriously damaging the British battleships, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, and the HMS Valiant. The attackers used a unique weapon nicknamed Mayali, or Pig, a human torpedo ridden by two drivers with the detachable warheads that could be fixed to the keel of a ship at anchor. This attack was preceded by a March 20 
1926 raid against Solder Bay in Crete using explosive motorboats called Barchetti, as well as a July 26th attack against Valletta Harbor using both of these weapons. These attacks demonstrated the effectiveness of small naval raiding forces, and in their wake, Winston Churchill called for combined operations, the headquarters of commando operations, to develop similar capabilities. Thus, in July 1942, Major Hassler was invited to establish a canoe raiding force based at Lumpsport at Portsmouth Harbor, which for security reasons he dubbed the Royal Marines Boom Patrol Detachment, or RMBPD. The detachment, which ultimately numbered 34 men, was recruited mostly from the Royal Marines Small Arms School at Gosforth and the Royal Marine Auxiliary Battalion at Portsmouth Harbor Basin, and regularly conducted night patrols of the harbor's anti-submarine net booms, lending credence to the unit's codename. Finding the Royal Marines' existing foreboats too flimsy for his purposes, Hassler designed a larger, stronger version measuring three meters long, designated the Mark II Cockle. On September 21, 1942, Hassler submitted a plan for the RMBPD to attack German shipping in Bordeaux Harbor. The plan called for three cockle canoes carrying two men each to be transported via submarine to the French coast and released into the Gironde estuary. The raiders would then make their way up the river to Bordeaux, paddling at night and hiding during the day to avoid detection. The raiders' main weapon would be the limpet mine, a waterproof explosive charge fitted with magnets which could be attached to the bottom of a ship's hull using an extendable pole. Though they contained only two kilograms of explosives, when placed two meters or more below the waterline, the compression effect of the surrounding water allowed the limpets to blow a sizable hole in the hull of nearly any unarmored civilian ship. The mines were set off with a special acetone or AC fuse, which consisted of a spring-loaded firing pin held back by a plastic washer. To activate the fuse, the raider chose from a selection of glass ampules containing various concentrations of acetone and inserted it into the fuse body. He then turned a screw to break the ampule and released the acetone. After a delay, the acetone would eat away the washer, releasing the firing pin and setting off the mine, the delay being determined by the concentration of acetone selected and the temperature of the water. In addition to eight limpet mines, each canoe would also be equipped with three sets of paddles, a compass and watch, a depth sounding line, a repair kit, a camouflage net, rations and water. Water. For six days, magnets on ropes to hold the canoe next to the target ship while placing the mines, and two hand grenades. Each man would also be equipped with a 45 caliber Colt 1911 pistol and a Fair Barn Sykes fighting knife. Once they had placed their mines, each canoe team would go ashore, hide or destroy their canoe, and make their way overland to the town of Rafek, where they would rendezvous with the French resistance and be smuggled across the border to neutral Spain. On October 13, 1942, Chief of Combined Operations Lord Louis Mountbatten approved Hassler's plan, giving it the code name Operation Frankton. The force was doubled from Hassler's original three canoes to six, each being named after a sea creature beginning with the letter C catfish, crayfish, conga, cuttlefish, coalfish, and cachalot. This was an old name for a sperm whale, by the way. The force was divided into two groups, each with its own designated targets. A Division with Catfish, Crayfish, and Conger, and B Division with Cuttlefish, Coalfish, and Cachalot. Hassler himself commanded Catfish along with crewmate Marine Bill Sparks, while a 13th man, Marine Norman Goley, was taken on as a reserve. After a month of training, including a full-scale simulated attack up the Swale River against the city of Deptford, the RMBPD was declared ready for action, and on November 30, 1942, the raiders and their canoes set sail from Holy Loch, Scotland, aboard the Royal Navy submarine HMS Tuna. The men were not told their exact target until the submarine was well underway, as Norman Colley later recalled, We knew it was supposed to be dangerous, but we were all about 20 years of age, so things like that didn't bother us. I thought the lads accepted it very well. Nobody expected to get back off it. It was a suicide mission. HMS Tuna was scheduled to reach the Gironde Estuary on December the 6th, but her arrival was delayed by poor weather and to having to negotiate a minefield. Finally, at 7.30 p.m. on December the 7th, she surfaced and began launching the canoes. Cachalot, crewed by Marines W.A. Ellery and E. Fisher, was damaged while being manhandled up the submarine's narrow hatches, and neither man participated in the raid. Norman Colley, as the reserve, also remained on board, but the remaining five canoes were successfully launched and their crews paddled off into the night, now well and truly on their own. Trouble struck almost immediately as coalfish crewed by Sergeant Samuel Wallace and Marine Robert Ewart suddenly went missing and strong winds and 1.5 meter waves caused Conger, crewed by Corporal George Sheard and Marine David Moffat, to capsize. Unable to bail out of their craft, Sheard and Moffat instead scuttled it and held on to two of the remaining canoes who dropped them off as close to the shore as they could. However, the flotilla soon spotted the missing coalfish and the four canoes pressed on with the attack. The next major obstacle was a group of four German frigates guarding the 
entrance to the river. By lying flat on their canoes and paddling silently, the raiders managed to slip by unnoticed, but in the process, Cuttlefish, crewed by Lieutenant John McKinnon and Marine James Conway, became separated from the group and was forced to come ashore nearby. Over the next five hours, despite a strong tidal current, the three remaining canoes managed to paddle 32 kilometers upriver before coming ashore near the town of St. Vivian de Medoc. There, they remained hidden throughout the following day. When the group set sail the following evening, however, Coalfish was nowhere to be seen, its crew having been captured by the French Gendarmerie or the National Police the previous morning. Undeterred, Catfish and Crayfish pressed on, covering 35 kilometers on the night of the 8th and 9th of December, 24 kilometers on the 9th and 10th of December, and 14 kilometers on the 10th and 11th of December. Freezing winter temperatures and strong ebb tides made progress slow and exhausting, and at one point the raiders were discovered by a local family resting during the day. Finally, at 9 p.m. on the clear and calm night of December the 11th, the raiders slipped into Bordeaux Harbour with catfish targeting the western side of the docks and crayfish the eastern side. Over the next four hours, the raiders succeeded in placing their 16 limpet mines on six vessels, including a large cargo ship, a small liner, and a German Speerbrecher patrol ship. All the while, they managed to avoid detection though on one sphincter-tightening occasion, a sentry on the German patrol ship spotted something and shone his flashlight down at the water. Mercifully, his beam barely missed Hassler and Sparks directly below. The job done, at 12.45 a.m., Crayfish and Catfish slipped out of the harbor and headed downriver. They met each other by chance on the Ile Cazo. They carried on together for another five hours before sinking their canoes near Saint-Jean-de-Blay and setting off separately on foot for the Spanish border. Fifteen hours later, the 16 limpet mines detonated simultaneously, sending all six ships to the bottom. Operation Frankton was a success. This victory, however, had come at a heavy cost. Corporal Shear de Marie Moffat of the Congo, which had capsized at the start of the mission, died of hypothermia, their bodies later being found farther up the coast. Lieutenant McKinnon and Marine Conway of the Cuttlefish managed to evade capture for four days before being betrayed and arrested by the gendarmerie in the town of La Riole, 50 kilometers south of Bordeaux, while Corporal Albert Laver and Marine William Mills of the Crayfish lasted two days before being arrested at Montleo Lagar. All four men, along with Sergeant Wallace and Marine Ewart of Coalfish, were interrogated by the Germans before being executed under Hitler's infamous commando order. This decree, promulgated in response to alleged violations of the Geneva Convention made by British commando raids on Dieppe and the island of Sark, ordered that all commandos and other special forces personnel be summarily executed as spies regardless of whether or not they were in uniform. The only men to survive Operation Frankton were Major Hassler and Bill Sparks of Catfish, who successfully reached Rafurk and made contact with the French resistance and made their way across the Pyrenees to Spain. It was not until February the 23rd, 1943, that Combined Operations Headquarters received a secret message from the resistance that Hassler and Sparks were safe. On April the 2nd, 116 days after setting off for the raid, Major Hassler arrived in Britain to a hero's welcome. For their actions, Hassler and Sparks were recommended for the Victoria Cross, the British Empire's highest award for gallantry. However, one requirement for receiving a Victoria Cross is that the recipient actually be fired upon by the enemy, and as the two men had managed to evade the enemy throughout the mission, they were disqualified. Instead, they were awarded the next highest honours, Hassler receiving the Distinguished Service Order and Sparks the Distinguished Service Medal. Laver and Mills of Crayfish were also recommended for the DSM, but at this time the medal was not awarded posthumously. Awards nonwithstanding, Operation Frankton would go down in military history as one of the most daring special forces raids ever mounted. The men of the RMBPD forever immortalized as the cockleshell heroes. But daring aside, what had Operation Frankton actually accomplished? Unfortunately for the raiders, the harbour bottom at Bordeaux was relatively shallow, allowing the Germans to quickly repair and refloat the damaged ships. However, like most commando raids, the main impact of Operation Frankton was psychological, demonstrating to the beleaguered British people that their nation could still strike back against Nazi Germany. The raid also temporarily disrupted German international shipping and forced the Germans to tie up large amounts of men and resources guarding Bordeaux and other ports against future raids. According to Winston Churchill, this alone shortened the war by as much as six months. The success of Operation Frankton would inspire further similar strikes, including the September 26, 1943 Operation Jaywick raid against Japanese shipping in Singapore Harbor, which succeeded in sinking six ships. This was followed in October 1944 by the less successful Operation Rimau, which featured the use of James Bond-style motorized submersible canoes known as Sleeping Beauties. However, none of these operations captured the popular imagination like the Bordeaux raid, with Combined Operations Chief Lord Lewis Mountbatten later stating, of the many brave and dashing raids carried out by the men of Combined Operations Command, none was more courageous or imaginative than Operation Frankton. 
The legacy of the cockleshell heroes lives on in their spiritual success as the Royal Navy's Special Boat Service, or SBS, whose official crest bears the highly appropriate motto, by strength and guile. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.